there was a sort of slight undertone of melancholy, I think, to Peter's life. Part of him was distant. He was very difficult to get close to because he had a very, um, a very distant side to him in which he would just suddenly be there. Um, and, and that's why, I mean, he's engaging and sort of fascinating as he was as a sort of raconteur or sort of making everybody laugh in a room. At the end of it, Peter was still unknowable in a sense. He'd gone. He would come into the eye um, maybe after five or six months or a year's absence. And no one would say, well, you know, what have you been up to, Peter? Or where have you been all this time? Or he wouldn't say, you know, I'm sorry I haven't been in. He would just, he would just come in and kind of carry on as if nothing had happened, as if he'd, you know, as if he'd just been away for a couple of days or something. He was particularly brilliant at things like we do these fake giveaway um, gifts at Christmas called Gnome Mart. And Peter would come in and say he wanted, he wanted us to do screaming Hawaiian grass, which is this grass that once it gets over an inch long, it starts screaming. So you have to go out and cut it. And uh, his other big idea was ants on ice. He thought that you should have these giveaway ants who did routines to the bolero. I don't know, he was, he was brilliant like that. You could always tell if Cook had been in on an issue because um, it had a flavour of, of something very, very mad. And the other thing he did was he was just fantastically good um, when we were in trouble, or when I was in trouble. And since I've been editor, there have been quite a lot of <laughs> times um, spent in the court. And Peter was always marvellous at turning up and taking you out to lunch and saying it doesn't matter that much and what the hell. And, uh, he was, he was just terrifically good value. But he was the, the essence of the non-interfering proprietor. I, I never believed there could be such a person. I mean, my political persuasion would say that every proprietor interferes. That's the whole point about proprietors, that they interfere. What's the point of being a proprietor uh, unless you interfere? Now, uh, I was refuted all the time by Peter Cook. It was the one continuous thing in his life, right the way from the 60s to the end. And Peter was proud to be the proprietor. Um, and I think he felt, you know, well, you know, even in the periods when he wasn't doing anything, well, I, you know, I own the eye, look at it, there it is. Without football, I'd be nothing. Yes. And uh, I love football. Yes. Football is, is, she's a, she's a cruel mistress. She's a, she's, a, <laughs> she's, she's more than, she's more than a mistress. She's a wife, she's a mother, she's a daughter, she's an errant child. I met him at a party, a private eye party. And we started bemoaning the fact that on television, uh, when you're tr even on things where you're supposed to be spontaneously funny, producers do like to sort of make you say what you're going to do or show you the questions in advance. The capital punishment has been abolished for some time now. Yes, it has, uh, except in uh, my neck of the woods. Uh, <laughs> yeah, football, football is about nothing unless it's about something and yeah. what it is about. Yeah. I'm telling you, I just got out of the Henry Ford Clinic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Henry Ford Clinic? Yes. Not, the, not the, the Betty Ford? No, the Henry one is a much tougher regime. Yeah. You yeah. Have, to, <laughs> have to build a car before you're allowed out. Well, the way we did it is that they're, they're fictional people, but I, as the, the host of the, the, the chat show, uh, knew about the background of, of each of these fictional guests. So he only had to think about what he was thinking about at the moment. You're actually, uh, what is it, sort of suspended at the moment, aren't you? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm temporarily uh, suspended for uh, some, some mistake, uh, judicial mistake, apparently, yeah. I was deemed to have made. Yeah, it's been considered by an inquiry. By, by, it's been considered by my peers, and uh, we should get the result very soon. Yes. There was an incident arising from a uh, defendant uh, being shot. Yes. Um, <laughs> in, in court. Um, by, by you. Uh, by myself. Yes. Yeah. And those four characters was as funny as anything he'd done in 15 years, much more funny, and really as funny as anything else that was on the telly. Would you say that your career has largely been a failure? <coughs> or a success, depends yes. on how you look at it. Yes. Toss yes. it in the air, let it fall, you know not where. Yes. But I can look myself in the mirror in the morning and say, there is a man. <laughs> He was a man with exceptional gifts who, um, who took them perhaps a little too lightly.
do you feel, as it's sometimes levelled at you, that, that you have never fulfilled all your potential? I would certainly agree with you on that. <laughs> I have never attempted to achieve my potential. <laughs> what could be worse than to achieve one's potential so early in life? <laughs> I leave it glimmering, glimmering on the horizon. I edge towards it. I hadn't really seen him for about ten years. You know, we'd, we'd met at charity concerts and that sort of thing. But I just didn't know how, how he was. I'd heard all these rumours about him becoming a recluse. And I thought, oh, is he bitter? Is he this and that? Well, he was quite the reverse. <laughs> he, was, he was not only extraordinarily forthcoming in talking in his own voice about himself in a way that he never had done before. He met Lynn, whom he, he married later. And I think she had a tremendous influence on him and, and made the last part of his life anyway very, very happy. So whatever went on in between, which I don't know anything about, um, it wrought a huge transformation in him, sufficient that he could then say to me at the end of the filming, why don't we do a stage show together? Cook and Bronze show was never to reach the stage. On January the 9th, 1995, Peter Cook died of internal hemorrhaging in a North London hospital. I was phoned up about one o'clock in the morning by Lynn, his wife, a sore wife, who I think phoned me first of all and said he'd just died. And I remember uh, phoning up his answering machine and just, just to hear his voice once again. Um, and then every now and again, I, every now and again, I've sat up in bed, you know, and God, he's not here, he's not here. Okay, and I go back to bed. But uh, it's, it's, it's been very difficult for me to, to um, digest the whole thing. Is this it, Peg? Is this heaven, Peg? Bloody hell. <laughs> I think the key to Peter in a lot of ways was a sort of, and this can go straight in Sood's Corner, a sort of existential boredom from an early age. He had, I mean, people have said, oh, he's actually an absurdist playwright who appeared in sketches and things. But there is a sense in which all of those sort of grotty people he invented, you know, the, um, the Pete and Duds and the Derek and Clives were just, just hanging about, filling in time. It's all we've got to do up here, sit here, fluffing these liars, you know. Not a, not a way to spend eternity, is it? Not much cop, is it, really? No, it's but I'm, I'm uh, rather bored already. <laughs> it's a very boring place. You'll find that over the millions of years, over the eons, over the centuries, stretching out ahead of you, Dad. It's one of the most boring places in the world. And what's more, you're here forever. Here today, here tomorrow. <laughs> That's the saying in angelic circles. Peter never had any... Uh regrets in his life. I never heard him voice any regrets. He didn't regret the fact that um, he lost his, his early facility. He didn't regret the fact that he lost his looks, which he did quite spectacularly. Uh, he didn't regret the fact that Dudley had gone on to fame and fortune uh, in Hollywood. The only regret he regularly voiced was that uh, at the house that we all shared in Fairfield, Connecticut in uh, 1963, he'd saved David Frost from drowning. Isn't this where we come in? Yes, it is. Do you want to see it through it again? This rubbish, no thank no, you. No, let's go. Yeah.